I see everyone's faces coming in. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes in case there's some people wrestling with Zoom technology. Anybody we know? Only imagine that there are. Um, so until we're while we're giving everyone a final chance to come in, I will say welcome. My name is Chelsea Dowell. I am the Director of Public Engagement at the Museum at Eldridge Street. And we're so glad to have everyone in here today to um, talk with Deborah Olin um, and um, Nancy Johnson, who is our archivist and exhibition curator at the museum. And in a second, I'm just gonna turn it right over to them. Um, but I will just give you the rundown of things for now. Um, like I said, Nancy and Deborah are going to chat. Nancy's going to talk to Deborah a little bit about her work and what you're seeing in the studio and um, what you will eventually see when um, the exhibition of Deborah's work opens at the museum later on this year. Um, you're all muted for now. That's just to cut down on background noise and things like that. But at any point, if you have a question or a comment or um, you want to chat about what you're seeing, you can use the chat function in the um, in the Zoom call. So that's at the bottom of your screen. You can click chat and you can send a message. Everyone will see that. Um, and I'll be monitoring the chat as we go. Um, so if you have any questions at all about what you're seeing or you wanna to talk to Deborah or Nancy about anything as we're going, just type those in the chat and we'll get to them either um, as they're going or at the end, probably both. Um, so I think we'll get going. It looks like we've got a, a nice group of people in here. So I'll turn it over to um, Nancy and Deborah and um, enjoy, welcome. Okay, uh, good morning. Am I, am I on there? Oh, good morning, everybody. Sorry, and this is a whole new ball game for me too. Um, this is really exciting for us because uh, actually today, we, Deborah and I had planned to be at the museum to start installing her show, uh, which is called Every Protection. And the plan was that it would open this Thursday, but clearly that can happen right now. Uh, so we thought instead we would take a trip virtually up to Massachusetts to Deborah's studio. So uh, good morning, Deborah. Good morning and welcome everybody to my studio. Um, I, uh, I have this uh, beautiful studio here and um, I'm going to start, I have two rooms, I'm going to start talking about my work a little bit in this room and then we're going to move into the other room where I have the work that's mostly packed up and ready to uh, go to New York. So um, this is a different series from the Every Protection series. Uh, this uh, started out as a woodcut project that um, I, in 2015, uh, this uh, Lyle Castigway, a printmaker and a very entrepreneurial guy, and uh, he invited artists to make three by six foot woodcuts. And so this one here is the um, rooting, and this is the first one that I did. And um, so I, I'm not an addition printer, uh, and it, take, it took two months to carve this, so what do you do when you only want to make one of something? Uh, so I also worked with color and tried different colors, and I and I worked with collage. I, I was mostly interested in uh, making connections between uh, botanical imagery and the organs in the body. And so um, you can see how you can take the same matrix and use it in a variety of ways. Um, I wanted to say that I'm I'm very excited uh, to be uh, having the show at. Um, the Eldridge Street Museum, and um, whenever it happens, <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> so uh, this is a, and I just showed the woodcut. This is, so this is what a woodcut looks like when it's being carved. This is one that I've been actually pulling out and taking back a number of times. And so you can see that in here, there's pieces, places that are carved away, and then there's places um, that I'm still working on that I just kind of sketch out and then go into later. So on um, this one, I was kind of trying to incorporate, so it, it looked more like the, the uh, figure was coming right out of the tree. 
Um, and um, in, in some ways it's really exciting because you don't know exactly what it's gonna look like until it's finished and inked and has run through the press. So, uh, and this is, so this is my press, this is an etching press. And you don't need a press to do woodcuts, but uh, it makes it a lot easier. And uh, this is, uh, I, I got this press in 2004. I, I was awarded the Rathport Prize and it um, allowed me to, um, to purchase this press. So it's a very uh, exciting tool to have. Um, so Deborah, can I ask you a question? Since the, um, since the coronavirus um, crisis started, have you continued to work in your studio or you find that you're doing other things now? I have been working in my studio and um, I've been pretty focused. Uh, I feel really lucky that I'm able to do that. Uh, my studio is about a mile away from where I live and I live in an artist building um, and I run the gallery there and we were able, uh, even though we had to close the gallery to the public, we were able to uh, keep it uh, open within the building with uh, safe parameters for viewing. So we were able to um, set up a new exhibition and um, there's another informal gallery there where we set up a show called Pandemic. So that's also been interesting to see uh, the entries for that show. Um, and I've been making masks and that's been, that's been, that's feeling really rewarding. Um, I, I started out, I was going to make them for a, um, a health center in the area, but um, I'm not the fastest sewer and uh, it seemed like as soon as I made one, somebody needed it. So um, my mailman got one, um, the nurses I know have gotten them. Uh, and just neighbors and family and friends. So, um, so yeah, I, I've been busy and creative and lucky, I feel like, uh, during this period. That's, that's great. The, the works that we see on the walls here, are the, the size and scale of these similar to the Every Protection series? Yeah, let's just go into the other room and uh, we, can, we can see that some of these series, um, so most of the work is, um, I had originally had a, a show of, of work. Okay, let me back up. <laughs> so the Every Perfection series has to do with um, this uh, ethnographic program uh, that was developed by S. Ansky, and it was disseminated throughout the, uh, the Russian Pale of Settlement between 1912 and 1914. So uh, in 2008, there was a article in Pachentrager, which is a, um, the National Yiddish Book Center magazine. And in the article, uh, they talked about uh, Professor Nathaniel Deutsch from the University of California in Santa Cruz. And uh, he was taking this questionnaire, ANSCII questionnaire, and he was um, uh, translating the questions from Yiddish to English for the first time. And this questionnaire had 2,087 questions in total. And uh, the thing that's so amazing to me is that I love the fact that the questions go from before birth to after death. And I love the fact that it's viewed as a cycle instead of as a timeline. And I found that there's this, this period after death and before birth that is completely unknown to us. And is it the same place? I don't know, but I kind of think of it that way. And um, so I was really excited about the article and the questions and I wrote to Professor Deutsch and um, I told him I was a visual artist, that I was really interested in what he was doing, and I asked him if it was possible to get the questions that dealt with pregnancy and childbirth. And he wrote back to me the next day and he said, uh, I went to your website, I love your artwork, maybe we can do a collaboration. So that was very exciting for me, and he sent me the questions and I made the work. 
uh, and there were 20 pieces all together and they went out to Santa Cruz for an exhibition fair. So a lot of these pieces um, you can see over here are all packed up. I unpacked one, uh, but the ones over here are packed up and ready to, um, to be, well, not totally ready, but they're protected and uh, they have the first layer on them. And, uh, but I was happy to unwrap one and see uh, what a great job the framer did. <laughs> so, <laughs> I sprung for this museum quality glass that doesn't have a glare. A lot of a lot of the places on the work is very dark, and uh, so it comes out looking like a mirror if you have a regular glass on on the surface. So some of these pieces um, that <clears throat> because the the space in the Eldridge could uh, only hold nine of these large prints. Um, so here's here's another one. This is. Um, right here. This is T-shirt totem, which is under the, the bubble wrap. Um, but then some of these pieces that I hung up or ones that were not framed uh, are still part of the series, but they didn't go, um, they're not, they're, they weren't framed and they're not going to the Eldridge. So, um, so this one here is called The Importance of Language and um, the little baby shoes. And um, so this, uh, this question uh, talks about uh, what words do, uh, do people first teach a child? Um, what, are, what are the first words that a child learns? And um, so I combined a lot of, um, of iconography that uh, has to de deal with uh, folklore and superstition. Um, the questions are just, just filled with, um, that kind of uh, cultural references that uh, Einstein was interested in. He grew up in the, the Pale Settlement. Uh, it was an area in Russia where 5 million Jews lived and it was 40% of the world population of Jews lived there. And he grew up there, so he had a very close connection. And so the questions are not general at <laughs> all. Wow. I mean, questions like, um, you know, is it considered bad luck to put a baby in front of a mirror before it gets its first teeth? I mean, these kind of questions, you don't just pull them out of nowhere. Um, he kind of already had a connection. Um, he grew up in Vitebsk, which is where Chagall grew up. So uh, you can see from Chagall's work that kind of um, Hasidic, um, dreamlike uh, imagery that um, comes from this kind of uh, folklore from that area. So um, you you've mentioned that um, you've seen those kinds of folklore beliefs and superstitions in other cultures, and that that intrigued you as well. Um, does that idea show up in other work you've done? There. There is a connection. Um, it seems like many cultures, uh, probably all cultures, um, have this, um, these kind of uh, folk uh, superstitions that have to do, even though, even people who are very rooted in science, you know, have a kind of, uh, it's a very vulnerable time. Um, in a woman's life, in a community's life. And uh, so um, I find uh, Greek people that I know, Chinese people that I know uh, talk about, I think the evil eye is one of the concepts that kind of spans. Um, and, uh, I, and another one I would say that spans is imprinting. Um, and imprinting is the idea, my mother used to tell me that my grandmother told her, never go to the zoo when you're pregnant. And this idea that you're going to look at something different or ugly or strange um, is going to somehow imprint on the fetus. And, um, and that is also something that I've heard um, from other people making references to um, Telling somebody that their baby is beautiful, <laughs> that's like, that's not a good thing to do. 
Um, that's the kind of thing, there's a lot of fear uh, about Lilith and uh, coming to snatch the baby um, of the evil eye of um, these kind of scary, unknown things that are going to, um, that are gonna come and, um, and, and make things bad for you. So um, even counting children, um, that it's, uh, it's, it's a form of bragging and uh, it's going to somehow uh, invoke the evil eye. So a lot of these pieces have the, um, the ultrasound on them. So, you know, this is, uh, and it's interesting because after I did this, uh, I didn't realize it, but I found from other people who viewed the work that at first their eye didn't see the uh, shape of the fetus, that the, their eye saw this kind of black bat-like uh, shape that was on top of the fetus and that there was this kind of ominous feeling about what was going on there. So um, this one has the, um, so the questions in Yiddish and the questions in English here. Is it considered better for the pregnant woman that no one knows about her condition? And um, this one that has a very ancient amulet um, and actually is um, partly in Aramaic um, with these little, uh, these little guys here. I don't know if people can see them, but um, these little kind of, I don't know, just uh, baby amulet. And uh, it's on the little thing. And this one says, do signs exist to determine whether a woman is pregnant with a male or female child? So, um, this floating with questions. This has questions on it. Um, uh, how does the soul enter the body? What beliefs exist concerning a child who was born with teeth? At what, what moment do people think that the soul enters the body of the fetus? Is, it, is, it, is there a belief that one must not rock an empty cradle? So uh, is there a belief that a pregnant woman should not lend anything out from her house? And what protective amulets, incantations, and charms are there to protect a woman from the evil eye? So this just kind of gives you the idea. And the questions go from pregnancy to childbirth to um, uh, about midwives, about wet nurses, about circumcision. Um, through play there and just on and on. There's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> so can you, uh, can you, for the show at Eldridge Street, you've made um, an installation to hang up in the um, women's balcony. I think I saw a piece there in, for it in your studio. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, so this is, um, this is an installation that I worked on for the, um, that's going to hang in the women's balcony. I was really excited when Nancy showed me the space and um, said it was in, available to do something there. Um, and uh, they're going to be viewed above your head. So you know, looking up on them. And, um, and, and there's some of the questions that are going to be uh, kind of woven through and draped around the shoulders of these garments. Um, I've been, I've been working with garments for a long time. And um, in fact, that eyelet uh, dress over there and that, uh, that, that print uh, was my grandmother's dress. And uh, I, I kind of started there. I had gotten a lot of her clothing when I cleaned up uh, her apartment and uh, I didn't really know what to do with them. I couldn't wear them. I couldn't give them away, uh, and I found that texture really translated so well into um, into printmaking. The um, ink is really stiff, and it picks up all the detail. So, um, so for this piece, um, you can see a little bit of what the process looks like. So, this is the slip I used and ran through the press. Um, so now it has black ink all over it, um, and. Uh, so these pieces were printed 
just to get the, the black ink onto the slip, which then I transferred onto the paper, the front and the back of the garment. Um, and I waxed the paper and sewed them together. So um, this piece is called From the Oral Torah. And um, Anski talked about uh, his ethnographic program as being, uh, as being the Oral Torah. He talked about that the, um, the culture, uh, the songs, the, um, the stories, the jokes, um, all the uh, information that he was gathering about the culture of the community was just as important as the actual written Torah. And, um, and so I, I, was, I used that reference here. And um, so the same kind of questions that are, um, that are in these pieces are going to be um, kind of draping through and around uh, the, the piece. I wanted to use, I, I'm using a, a clothing as a metaphor for the body. So a slip, I, I, I feel, you know, it's very intimate. It's right against your skin. And um, it kind of uh, represents vulnerability to me. Whereas the robe or the coat, um, the outside garment is more of a protection. Um, and so I really like the idea of having these two uh, different uh, garments kind of uh, intertwined into one piece. And, um, and so that's where that, uh, that idea came from. They're, they're really beautiful. I think it's, it's going to make for a spectacular installation. I can't wait to see them hung up at uh, Eldridge Street along with the rest of them. Um, Me too. If, if, <laughs> oh, I know. I wish I, wish I could say it's going to happen on uh, such and such a day, but everybody keep an eye on our website. Um, we'll definitely let you all know as soon as we know. Um, Deborah, if people want to read more about your or see more of your work or read more about this every protection series um where should they go your website or yeah i'm on my website deborahollen.com um actually if um if you go to the artworks um there is a, a section on every protection and there's a a PDF file you can click on, which has um, the catalog from the show. Here's the, um, the front of the catalog. So this is the catalog, and so all the um, all the works are in the catalog, and um, and a beautiful introduction by Nathaniel. Yeah, Lee. the essay so, is very interesting. It's very interesting to read. Yeah. Um, we were excited to have the show at Eldridge Street because it's in researching the immigrant um, congregants who founded the synagogue, I, I often came across this ANSI survey, and it feels like a window into the uh, beliefs and um, superstitions and just the way people thought when they, even that they would have brought with them from the old country when they came to New York. So it's, and the work itself is just really, really beautiful. So we, we can't wait. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thank you. He, I think maybe some people um, know Anski's name more from, uh, he was a playwright and he was, he's most famous for um, the play The Dybbuk, which later became a film. I don't, I don't know how recent that film was, but I saw it. It was pretty creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think his, um, his theatrical nature kind of, uh, he used that for his advantage when he did this um, ethnographic survey. So he had to go into these communities. Um, it was really uh, challenging because, you know, they were very close knit, small communities. They didn't know what to make. He went in with um, a group of Zomlers, um, people, mostly students, um, who uh, helped him collect the information. And people were like readily flowing with, uh, with answering these questions. And he had to do a lot of kind of theatrical tricks sometimes. Um, there were women who uh, specialized in uh, healing, in, uh, in different uh, potions and, um, and things for, um, 
for healing. And he would go into these places and he would fake sick and go into these uh, women's, uh, I don't know, offices with, um, with a couple of the other uh, Zomlers and they would, um, and, and one of them would be sitting in the corner writing and they'd been trying to get, um, you know, the information, these women really guarded these secrets because there was a lot of competition to be, you know, the best healer. So, so he had to use a lot of his, uh, his knowledge from the theater to kind of, um, to work into uh, getting the stories about how he made the survey and got the information. Um, and the other thing about the survey is that they don't have any answers. So I think it's just, it feels so Jewish to me. <laughs> the idea that there's all these questions, 2,087 questions and there's no answers. It's just, I don't know, it just seems perfect. So um, Deborah, that's actually, I was going to ask that because I see Sherry here in the chat said that her mother told her not to go to a cemetery when she was pregnant, when you were talking about the different um, superstitions around where you can go and the imprinting and things like that. And so that, um, those questions make it seem pretty clear that um, he had a, a kind of a sense for what some of these folk traditions were, like you were saying, but some of the other ones are so open-ended, like when does the soul enter the body? And I just would, I would love to know what they would have <laughs> answered to that, but we don't, right? There's just, they never answered it. No, there's no answer. And, and also it's just so timely. I mean, it's, it, this is something that we're debating so hotly right now. I mean, it's just like, it, it doesn't change. You know, these are things that, that we're still, it's the unknown and it's the only thing that it's the one place we're never going to be able to discover while we're here and that's uh it's kind of overwhelming sherry also asks if you're related to the olin family from the camp olin sang ruby i don't know <laughs> i haven't done my ancestry you have some genealogy work to do during i know i guess so yeah it'll be, it'll be interesting to find out so were, I, were there any other questions? And does anyone else have any other questions? Jennifer says, so interesting. She loves the questions in your work and use of fabric. So that's just a nice, a nice thing. Thanks, Jennifer. If anyone hey, Margaret, has any other questions? Margaret is raising her hand. Go ahead, Margaret. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I can't find the chat box. I, but I do have a couple of comments. This isn't a question. Um, I have the tremendous luck to own two of Deborah's pieces. And one of them is from this series, and it is the making of my house. I'm sitting here just so repentant that I didn't take a picture that I could send to everybody. It is a beautiful, beautiful dress and has been the subject of a lot of comment as well as our tours. Um, but what, I, I would like to add this because I had some, a professor from Hebrew U over, uh, uh, along with a very scholarly friend of mine. Apparently, and you, you may know this, Deborah. Um, the, there were also many, many artifacts collected in this survey. And those artifacts were shipped to St. Petersburg. You know the story then. Yeah. And they were, after the revolution, well, maybe you could tell it better than me. Uh, but I'll, they were not released. The Russian government has basically not released them. And although they were collected for this survey, they're being held, so to speak, in um, St. Petersburg and are part of the anthropological um, collection of the Russian government. Am I telling that right? I think um, so. Yeah, I don't know about that. I do know that there is a, there is a museum uh, that's devoted to the ethnographic uh, program in St. Petersburg. Um, I don't know how extensive it is. I had, I had a Russian friend write to them and, um, and ask about bringing this work there. And um, they would be happy for me to show the work <laughs> if I could pay to get it there. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Could be in the future. We'll see what happens. I hope but, so. Meanwhile, this has been, I just, we love the piece that we own from this collection. It is a fabric dress. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. And it's nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Comment?
<laughs> well, Nan, so I guess you did mention that we don't know exactly when we'll be opening up um, and also um, mentioned that everyone should just sort of check the website and tune into us and I'll just reiterate that um, as soon as we know more about when we will be open and then when we'll be able to welcome everyone in for the opening of the exhibition and all that good stuff um, we'll be sure to notify everyone um, we have an e-newsletter that you can sign up for on our website that's eldridgestreet.org i'll put the link in the chat too um, we always share up-to-date information on there um, we're also on facebook and twitter and instagram and that's a really good way to keep in touch with us um, we're sharing tidbits from the museum and um, Lower East Side history on all of those channels while we're closed and doing our best to bring you these sorts of programs while we can actually be in touch in person. Um, so I recommend following us there if you want that type of information. This is also being recorded and we'll put it on YouTube and then share it on social media too. So um, you can look out for that if you have um, if you want to share this with anyone else who couldn't make it today, then it will be available to do that. So I guess uh, we'll say thank you, Deborah, for um, you. bringing us into your studio. Uh, it's been such a pleasure and so nice to see your work in the place where you make it. Uh, and thank we can't you. we can't wait to see it at Eldridge Street. Yeah, I know. I want everybody to, to stay home and stay safe, and we're going to get through this. Yeah, and it happen. Stuff yeah. like this helps. <laughs> Yeah, so thank it does. you. It brings <laughs> thank the you. hope. So thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. And thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.